Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel where we have fun with cars and today we're going to fix the issue that I was talking about in the previous video with the really loud valve noise coming from my engine. Now I have a little bit of work to do to get to it. As most of you know, these Honda Fits have that engine crammed really deeply inside of there and this whole entire front cowl has to come off. Now if you're anything like me, I don't really like diving that deep into repairs unless I have know-how and experience so we're going to experience this together and you get to learn off of what i get to learn during this whole project so through this process what we're going to do is we're going to remove this uh cowling here we're going to have to remove the intake the intake plenum the upper intake plenum here and we're going to also get at the valves which are underneath this valve cover here and while we're at it we're going to replace the spark plugs so before we begin one of the best things to have on hand is a shop manual. This is going to help you with every question that you need, regardless of whether it's covered in this video or not. One of the secrets to this job is actually hidden in the wheel well. As you can see behind this wheel, there's a small little access port. This is the crank nut, and that'll help you turn the engine over clockwise for each time that you want to get to top dead cylinder for each cylinder. You'll need access to this, and it's just easier with the wheel off. So what we'll do is we'll jack up the car safely with a jack stand, and we'll remove the wheel. Now in this instance, the steel wheel got connected to the hub, kind of fused on from all the rust, and I had to give it a few whacks from behind with a metal hammer. You should use a soft hammer first, and I did, but that really didn't do the trick, so I had to up the ante. So as you can tell, these hubs are pretty ugly. That's the reason why the steel wheel was sticking to the hubs here, because of all this rust. Now I'm going to take a wire brush attachment on my drill, and I'm going to knock all that off before we reassemble everything, but I do want to point out that there's a lot of stuff in here that's going to be upgraded in future videos. I'm going to do extended wheel studs, and I'm also going to do a cheap big brake kit comparison. I'm going to look at four piston Willwood calipers in the stock 262 millimeter rotor size, but I'm also going to look at the ITR upgrade where you take the caliper from an Integra Type R and a 280 mil rotor from a Mini Cooper, and install it and get a big brake upgrade on the cheap. That'll be in a future video. So first we've got to get the windshield wipers off and those are taken care of with these two little plastic caps here. Using a proper trim tool, these little caps pop up really nice and easy. These unzap very easily with the use of a 14 millimeter socket. pry them up by hand and they come right off. Next, remove this rubber trim piece. It just pulls right off. Pry this trim piece upward to remove. Lower the hood to gain access to these trim pieces, which can be pried off. Using a different style Using a different style of trim tool, you can get these two clips on the passenger side and the driver's side. And you might drop one in like I just did. Well, I did find this trim piece. It did fall in the bowels of the, uh, of the engine. You can see it right there, but it should be easy to retrieve. Next, pry up the whole entire assembly. Once you have those two trim pieces taken off from the cowl, you can go ahead and remove the line for the windshield wiper fluid. That just simply separates and pulls apart. And then out of this hole, you can draw it back in order to give yourself some room and take out the two pieces altogether. After a little bit of deliberation, I decided that I'm going to remove the final bolt that's in this wiper arm assembly. Now normally you don't need to do that, but this other final bolt on the cowl down here is being a little bit difficult to remove with all this stuff in the way. So this clip comes out and the rest of the wiper arm assembly can easily be moved out of the way. Now with everything out of the way, you can see that access to the backside of this engine is so much easier. You can see the spark plug coils right there, and it's going to be pretty easy to take all of this intake plenum stuff off to get to the valve cover. So we are going to now disconnect the coil packs, which is kind of a two-handed job, but it's pretty easy. You just pinch the top 
of this little clip here. You pinch the top of it and then you just simply pull it off. And then a 10 mil bolt on the backside holds it against the cylinder head. Next up, using a 10 millimeter socket, you can take out the coil packs. Next, I had to grab a magnet tool in order to get the spark plug out from the cylinder, but that works as easy as it can be. So next up, after getting the spark plugs out from back here, we're gonna have to take off this whole entire black plenum on top. That means we're gonna have to disconnect the throttle body and these bolts over here. There's a couple little clips and everything, but those are pretty easily uh, removed from just pinching them from the bottom and having them pull out. These are all 12 mil bolts. And the bolts on the throttle body are also 12 millimeter. I'm also gonna loosen up the hose clamps to make sure that removing the throttle body is easy. And I'll end up loosening up this intake as well just to have it move around and get additional clearance when I need it. And with the intake out of the way, don't forget there's two more of these 12 millimeter bolts on the bottom of the throttle body. You can get a clear view of all four of the bolts on the throttle body right here. After you've loosened all the bolts, this bracket simply pulls out. So after you've taken this bracket off, you can see that the manifold is still attached in a couple of ways. For one, right down here, you have another 12 millimeter bolt, and back here on this perch you have two 10 millimeter bolts. And then once those extra bolts that are done down here and down here have been loosened and removed, you can move the throttle body to the side and simply lift up and move the whole entire intake plenum out of the way. Before removing the valve cover, you'll have to take off the bracket that holds the clips for the coils. That's just a simple bracket that you loosen with a screwdriver and move out of place. On the driver's side of the valve cover, you also have this hose to remove as well. Now that we have full access to the valve cover, you can see the eight bolts that hold it in. If you guessed that all these bolts were gonna be a 10 mil, you are correct. Just so I don't get anything down these ports, I'm gonna have them plugged with a shop rag, just to be on the safe side. And then we should be able to just lift the valve cover right off. There we go. Before I even went any further, I just wanted to make sure that the replacement gasket, the blue one, was the same as the black. And it is, so once that goes in, that'll be all nice and fresh. So the next thing that you wanna do is, if you remember that port at the side of the car, you can stick a 19 millimeter socket. I recommend a deep well socket because otherwise you're gonna need an extension. And you can load up as many extensions as you want so long as you can turn the engine. So right now, that's showing two uh, the number there in the square on the camshaft. So what you wanna do is you wanna gradually, carefully rotate the engine clockwise that you'll eventually see one that says up and then you wanna look right there where that hash mark at about the two o'clock position on the camshaft uh, sprocket, that should be even with the cylinder head and that shows cylinder one at top dead center. Now you can repeat that for all four or all three other cylinders with that same hash mark. And each one is marked, like you saw, two was in the square, three was in the square, and four is in the square. Up designates cylinder number one. So now that we have everything apart, it's time to check the valves. Now I'm not gonna dive in and start taking things apart because if a valve is the correct adjustment, I don't have to do anything. So I've got these feeler gauges and according to the shop manual that I showed you earlier, the intake side, the closest side to you, is supposed to be between 0.15 and 0.19 millimeters. And the exhaust side over here is supposed to be 0.26 to 0.30. I've kind of picked out a happy medium for both of those with 0.18 on the intake side and 0.28 on the exhaust side. So as you can see, I have my feeler gauge in there and you just want a slight amount of drag to make sure that you have the right clearance. If it has any drag or if you can move the valve itself up and down, while the feeler gauge is in there, then you've got some adjustments to make. This one seems to have just a tiny little bit of drag with the 0.18 millimeter uh, feeler gauge in there. So this one I think is okay. On the exhaust side, I'm using the 0.28 gauge on these and these have the same thing. You wanna just test them and make sure 
that they have only a slight amount of movement. This one has a good clearance right here with just a slight amount of drag. And this one might be a tiny bit loose. Yeah, I can move this one with the feeler gauge in it, so we're gonna we're gonna tighten that one. And don't be worried if you have to use one of these to loosen the adjusting screw. There it goes. And now with the feeler gauge installed, we want to tighten the adjusting screw a little bit, ever so slightly, until we can still feel a little bit drag. That's too much, so we'll back it off a little bit until we got a little bit of drag in there. And there we go. Now if you notice, that took almost about a quarter turn in order for this to get tight. Now we're going to remove the feel gauge, we're going to put the adjusting screwdriver back on there so that way it doesn't move while we tighten the, the locking nut and then we're going to tighten the whole assembly. And now it's tight. Now of course the next thing to do is not move on to the next one. We're going to double check and make sure that the valve clearance on this is correct. So now we've got the feeler gauge back in and we have just the minimal amount of drag that we need and it is all good. So that's one valve noise that's going to go away. Now to check the rest of them. So now that we've got all the valves adjusted, some of them were a little bit too tight, some of them were a little bit too loose, we're going to torque them down and that calls for 10 foot-pounds, but in the case of my torque wrench, which only reads in inch-pounds, it's a simple times 12 measurement, so 120 inch-pounds. One thing that you want to do after you've torqued everything down, check it again with a feeler gauge. I had a few of these that had come out of spec and I had to loosen them, re readjust them, and tighten them back down again until they were correct. So now with all the valves adjusted, you wanna get the uh, valve cover back on. And to do that, first you wanna make sure that the surface of this is all clean. What I'm doing is I'm wiping away from the oil galleys just to make sure that any surface dust and dirt on here doesn't fall into the oil that it falls outside. But you wanna have a nice clean surface for your new gasket to mate to. In addition to using a shop rag, you might also want to use a plastic razor. This is going to help with some of the stuck on RTV that was on there before to help get it off to make that surface nice and clean a second time around. It's soft and it's safe on the aluminum of the cylinder head. So one of the only things that I'm going to do that is out of step from how I took this all apart is I'm going to use this time right now to get the spark plugs back into the car. And now what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to use a small piece of hose to hold this so that way I can hand tighten it as they go back in. So now we're going to tighten all of those spark plugs to 20 foot pounds. You're going to also want to make sure that the surface of the valve cover where the gasket sits is clean and clear of dirt as well. When you're done putting the gasket in, it should look like that. It just easily sets in place. And then to ensure everything is as clean as possible, hit those same mating surfaces with a rag that's been hit with brake clean. Next up, apply a bead of gasket maker to where the timing chain cover and the cylinder head meet. Now we'll put the valve cover back on. Now mind you, when I was putting the gasket on here, I did put a little bit of oil on the new blue rubber gasket in order to have it seat correctly. And these bolts that I'm putting back in are only gonna be finger tightened at first from the center outwards. Now that we've tightened them by hand, it's time to torque them down correctly. That is going to be 84 inch pounds and they have to be done in this sequence. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So as you can tell from the lack of sunshine, it has taken a better part of the day to get this type of work done. And you should really only use this video as a guide on doing your valves. If you don't trust yourself, have a professional do it because this does take a lot of work, especially for a first timer. I'm glad that you were able to join me as I was learning this whole process. It's the first time that I've really had a chance to tear this engine apart, but that valve tick was driving me nuts. So I really wanted to get in there and learn this car a little bit more. So now the main thing to do is, as they say in those repair manuals, the installation is reverse of removal.